Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, Sammy Fryer. And today we are continuing our tour to find out what is the best burger in the city of Florence. And so today upon request, I went to Bird's Nest. Bird's Nest is located in downtown Florence on Dargan Street, uh, right beside Lula's coffee shop, right beside the Leaf Lounge, two doors down. And I got a particular burger from them, which is their Trail Magic Burger. This is a specialty burger. So this is their Trail Magic Burger and it has on it It's bacon, pimento cheese, a fried green tomato, and uh, their bistro sauce, they call it. I also got the fried banana peppers too, but let me not get ahead of myself. As far as this burger goes, I'm going to rate and rank this holistically, but factoring into my ranking particularly is going to be the patty and the bun because those items are, those components are standard for every burger that we're going to look at in the whole city. The, the way this is dressed is unique. So I'm going to heavily factor in the patty and the bun into the actual final ranking that you'll see at the end of the video. Let's drop some of those out. Now, I've only been to Bird's Nest two times. So I've had people speak very highly of Bird's Nest, um, particularly the burger. I have not had this one before. So we're about to rank it and find out. With that out the way, last thing I'll tell you, what we're going to talk about after we get into this a little bit is I actually want to talk to y'all about the Florence food scene. I want to get your thoughts on it. And I also want to tell y'all about an idea that I had that I'm hoping somebody will take and run with. Let's start with this burger. Let's get right into the burger to start with. Let's try the meat first. Let's just do that. All right. So little meat right there. get a bite on this without the bacon and see if I can figure out what's going on here. Um, let me get one more. Let me get one more real quick. For one, the bacon, bacon always brings the party, right? Bacon's always the life of the party. The pimento cheese that's on there is not super sharp. So a lot of times a pimento cheese packs a powerful punch. That's like a real mild pimento cheese, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's complimentary. It's good. But I'm just saying that it, I like mine a little bit sharper and heavier. That's kind of mild. And then the fried green tomato helps out not only with some uh, cuts through with a different flavor, that kind of acidic, uh, acidic tomato flavor. And then their bistro sauce has got a horseradish thing going on. There's, there's horseradish in there. So I expected to not be high on this. I'm just going to be honest because of the last couple of experiences that I had. However, I'm going to tell you, I'm pleasantly surprised. The burger, which is probably, well, for this purpose, the most important part of this. Oh, and I will say they, their ranch is excellent. It doesn't really have a whole lot going on in terms of seasoning. All right, it really doesn't. But it works because what it does have, it's got like a, um, a wood-fired, wood-smoked, uh, wood-grilled type flavor to it, which, which is huge. That's carrying it, honestly. So this... So I'm not mad at the burger. It all complements. It all it all works together. It really does. I like that. I'm not mad at that. I'm definitely not mad at these. If y'all haven't had these and you like banana peppers or peppers in general, 
These are crazy. Whoever came up with that idea deserves an award. These are just good. And the thing about these with the banana pepper, it's not the breading that carries it. It's the banana pepper itself. That's really what cuts through that. So I'm pleasantly surprised with this. I already knew these were going to be banging the fries. They're good. It's it's hard to rank fries because to me, fries are fries. Not completely before somebody jumps on me. I'm just saying that there's different kinds of fries and they're all either good or they're not. There's different types though. You know, some people don't like certain types. What I'm saying is I like them all. That's what I meant by that. And yeah, those are good fries. They remind me, to give you a comparison, if some of y'all will remember, they kind of remind me of um, Captain D's fries back in the day. I don't know if they're still the same. I haven't been to Captain D's in a long time. But they remind me of what Captain D's French fries used to be like with the texture on them. I don't know if y'all remember that or not. All right, let's get into the subject, though. I think that the food scene in Florence is changing for the better. And this has been going on for a while. Uh, particularly, I think at the heart of it would have to be the downtown development, i.e. Bird's Nest is downtown. Il Bungo Stio's, uh Italian restaurant on Celebration. The Massimo's on Irby. So a couple of Italian places that are both really good, I think. But there's a lot of things happening. Even the Florence Food and Wine Festival. You know, this just intentional effort to build the food scene in Florence. And there's been this connotation that people in Florence don't no food and they only want chains and fast food and i understand that but that's not everybody and that's changing in fact we've got this florence foodies facebook group that's only like a week old and it already has almost a thousand members in it there are people in florence that like food and that want to try new food and they like to eat and i know multiple people personally that can appreciate the degrees and quality of food so I would say that the Florence food scene is changing. And I know I'm excited about it. And I know a lot of y'all are as well, especially if you're watching this video. You probably are a Florence person and is excited about this. Oh, they give you the pickles too. I didn't even see those. That's nice. That's a nice touch. What I wanted to say was this idea that I had. And I hope that somebody out there is going to hear this and take it and run with it. I, I don't mind sharing the idea. Did somebody make this happen? I envisioned about two, three months ago, a New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia style deli in downtown Florence. And I know that if somebody will do it and they pull it off, they got to execute though. If somebody does it and they execute, it's going to pop. It has to, it has to, but you got to execute. And so you need, you know, cold cuts, hot sandwiches. And I pictured a couple of deep fryers where you could have some specialty items also. Like I've seen a video for a deli in New Jersey where they've got these empanadas also that they served at a really popular, something like that, a little niche item to add on. But if somebody executes, they'll kill it. Because right now, the best sandwich in Florence is Jersey Mike's. And I don't even think it's close, honestly. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. But if somebody was to come in Hit your traditional cold cuts, you know, your Italian hot subs, a good uh, cheesesteak, which is lacking. Jersey Mike's has the best cheesesteak in Florence, too. Maybe, maybe Stefano's or Chibo's on the right day. Those are pretty solid, too. I, I like those. I'm not going to put it on the same tier with anything I've had in Philly, but I'm saying they're not bad steak sandwiches. And then, like I said, um, maybe like a chicken cutlet sandwich, something like that. Maybe you come in and add the Reuben, because if you saw in this video right now, in my opinion, the best Reuben in town, hands down, is at SC Real Foods. But if somebody came in and made like a stacked one, the bottom line is you're really, your goal is to be superior to a chain in Jersey Mike's. I think somebody can accomplish that if they know how to execute. Now, how do you execute? It's about the bread and the quality of meat. You've got to execute on the bread. It's got to be fresh baked bread. You can't, you can't be bringing in bread. And the meat quality. I think a lot of times restaurant owners try to minimize their food costs. And I understand it's business, but you can't do that with a restaurant. You can't do that. Your product is food. 
you can't cut corners and be cheap with the food. And you cannot, for the most part, cook your way out of cheap, low quality ingredients. Not not for foodies. You can't do it. You can't do that. So what I'm saying is, I believe if you spare no expense for the quality of the meat, you make sure you get the bread right. I've heard of people down in Myrtle Beach that actually ship in water from up north because, you know, they all say for the pizza, for the bagels, for the sandwiches, it's all about the water. I'm not saying you got to do that. I'm just saying you've got to execute on the bread. You got to. You can't you can't fumble there and expect this to work. Same thing with the quality of the meat. You need to be slicing that meat in-house and it needs to be good quality. But if you do that and you execute, and what I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about doing this. I just didn't have the green light. I didn't feel the leading of the spirit to do that. No joke. I'm not even kidding. So I said, it's not for me. Or at least not at this time. If you put a deli in downtown Florence in the same area where Bird's Nest is, there's, there's still vacant spaces down there. And you execute with the food and you really are intentional about a good product, mom and pop's deli. I'm not talking about another chain. It is going to pop. It has to. For one, the entire workforce of McLeod Hospital will eat there. All of them will. You're crushing Firehouse. You're crushing Jersey Mike's. And do people still eat at Subway? I, I haven't had Subway in years. I There's a world... A very realistic world where I'll never eat Subway again in my life. But what I'm saying is that don't be mad at me if one of you out there hear this and say, oh, I think he's right. And you open up a deli and it flops because you didn't execute. You cannot spare expense. If you go all in, instead of worrying about the profit margin of food costs and put out the right product, you're going to make the money on volume because everybody's going to, I'm going to be down there probably once a week at least. So somebody needs to make that happen. And I've already been contacted by some of you out there from other parts of the country. If you're in New Jersey right now and you're like, yo, I know how to run a deli and you want to come somewhere where it's a little bit cheaper, a little bit warmer, right? Some of the different things that we talk about on this channel that make our area attractive and you want to be right on 95 where you could just shoot back home. You know, well, it's not a quick drive, but you're at least right by 95, close to the beach down south. You come down here. And if you're interested, I can connect you with the right people that you could talk with about getting that location secured. And you can develop your vision right there. And we're going to be happy about it. Let me give you all a final review on this and get out of here. I'm going to be straight up with you all. I really expected to rate this mid. I did. But to my surprise, the burger meat has this wood grilled flavor thing going with it. And when I mentioned the seasoning earlier, I'm not saying that it's not seasoned at all. It's just not, you know, seasoning is not what's carrying the burger. It's that wood smoke flavor. I don't know where that's coming from. If somebody knows what they do in the kitchen at Bird's Nest and wants to tell us, I don't know where it's coming from, but keep doing it because it's carrying that burger. And then as for the whole burger itself, all those flavors actually do work. The bacon, the pimento cheese, even though it's mild, that probably actually works for this burger because the horseradish on the bistro sauce and the elements of the fried green tomato on there kind of help blend all of that. So it's almost probably good in this case, maybe. I don't know. I like sharp cheese. So, you know, I probably would have liked it anyways like that. But I'm saying it, it probably works no matter what. All those flavors really do come together. It's a good burger. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be number three. This is our third burger. It is going to be number three, but I can guarantee you that it will finish somewhere around the top of this list. Probably. I don't think that it's going to continue to drop to the bottom. I can't put it over buddies personally, and I can't put it over Del May. It is good. And so I'm going to put it in third on the spreadsheet. You'll see that on your screen right now. And I am going to give it a top tier rating. And I'm going to be honest, guys, I thought this was going to be mid. I thought the rating on this one was going to be mid. Now, these fried banana peppers, elite. Elite all day with the ranch that they have. No joke. I'm going to say 
that's probably one of the best appetizers in town. The fried banana peppers at Bird's Nest. So again, Bird's Nest is on Dargan, downtown Florence, right beside Lula's Coffee Shop. Uh, make sure y'all get down there and check them out. This was the Trail Magic Burger, and I am giving it a top tier rating. I am putting it at number three right now but i do think by the time this is said and done this burger is going to be somewhere around the t it's top tier every burger we hit is not going to be top tier i would put this one top tier though so i paid 21 dollars 73 for all of this after a tip all right so let me know what y'all's thoughts are somebody open a new york style deli here if you're local and you're hearing this idea and saying i don't know what to do and i don't know where to start but i think he's on to something then do this because you don't want to mess this up. This is a big investment. It's going to be a lot of your time and your energy and your emotion and all of that. Go up north for like a month. Go to Philadelphia. Go to New Jersey. Go over to New York. But you don't even have to go to New York. You could just hit Philly and New Jersey and learn everything you need to learn. Get the hot sandwiches. Get the cold cuts. Hit multiple places. And, and then bring what you learn back down here open a deli, put it right there in downtown Florence, and it will pop. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it will pop. By all means, take my idea and run with it. We just want the sandwich. The Florence foodies, I can tell you, just want the sandwiches. And we're happy with that. All right? I love y'all. I really do. And I like to, I like to see y'all eat and be happy too. And um, we're going to get out of here because it's super hot up here. I didn't really plan to do this today there was an open window of time so it's like well we'll go knock it out uh and there was no ac running to cool it down up here prior to coming up here this is very hot as you can see i'm sweating profusely <laughs> so i'm gonna get out of here